start off with is a nice thick sheet of styrofoam. Here in Texas we can only get half inch and three quarter inch so at uh, Home Depot or Lowe's I buy these and I glue them together to make them thicker and I rough up the edges a bit. Now down at the bottom I leave a little space so that I can put some wooden stakes in the ground and that's what holds these up. Now on my computer I've gone ahead and printed out the letters and a little bit of scroll design as I wanted. And what we're going to do is we're going to transfer this into the styrofoam. Let me show you what tools we're going to need. Alright, for tools it's going to be pretty basic. We're going to need an exacto knife. Now get one that has a real pointed tip to it because you're going to be doing a lot of detail work and you want to be able to move this around very easily. A wide blade just will not work as well. The other thing that we're going to need is a styrofoam cutter. I bought this one from Hobby Lobby and you know they always have a 40% off coupon this works exceptionally well. Let's get to it. Okay, let's get started uh, carving here. Make sure that your blade is nice and sharp. And I'm going to follow the outside of the lettering on both sides. Now you don't have to go too deep, maybe a quarter inch or so. Go on both sides, hold your paper down, and I like to use this up and down motion. Now when choosing your font, you don't want to go with a, a font that's too thin because it's going to be hard to remove the material later. And it's also going to be hard to carve it out. There's no real right or wrong way to do this. As you can see, it's not perfect. But that's okay because this is going to be the effect of carved in stone. It, it, it's not going to look perfect. Okay. Now this is going to take me a while to get all this out, but it'll be worth it. So, check back in a few minutes. Okay, I've got it zoomed in here, and you can see how I've transferred the image onto the styrofoam. Now we need to remove the material and I'll show you how to do that. Okay, now that the styrofoam cutter is heated up real nice, what we're going to do is remove the material in between your cuts. Now you don't have to go deep at all and let the tool work for you and just melt it away. You see you don't have to go very deep. And again, it doesn't have to look perfect. Okay, there's that. Now this tool has a flat portion on the top so you can get really accurate cuts. So I'm going to turn it sideways here. Just let the tool do the work. Let it melt everything away. Now you barely have to touch the material. Okay. 
You just barely have to touch the styrofoam for it to melt. Now this font is a little bit tighter than I usually go with. I just wanted a different look on this tombstone. But before you take on your first tombstone, I would practice. There you go. go. Now this one was a little bit more involved. So this one probably took me about an hour to carve out in total. Right, on to the next step. Alright, so we're back out in the garage. You can see that I've carved out all the letters. Now what we're going to do is give it a little bit of a, a, a texture instead of it being so flat. I'm going to take a, a spray bottle of water and I'm going to lightly mist it. And uh, then I'm going to take our heat gun. Going to let it warm up a bit. We're just going to kind of lightly hit it. I'm going to stay away from the letters because I don't want to distort the letters. Maybe you can see where it's getting a little bit of that texture. I'll zoom in in just a minute. Now we want these uh, letters to stand out, so I'm going to use some store-bought flat black and we'll fill it in. And uh, in order to get it right down into the carving, I'm going to use a lot of paint. I'm going to just be real generous with this. And a lot of times you have to push it right down in there. So I'm going to get a lot of paint on the brush. So you just get a lot of paint. Push it right down in there. Now after we've filled in all of the letters, we're going to go through and uh, we're going to stand this up and let all the ex excess uh, just drip out. Now you can see here how the paint is starting to run out of the letters. I just go through and just kind of wipe up the drip. Next All we're right. going to paint. So now it's time for painting. I'm going to go ahead and use a roller, but when going over the lettering, 
we're going to have to do it very, very light because you don't want the paint to go down inside the letters. So I'm going to start off on the side a little bit and then very lightly go over the letter areas. And you can see how that just really pops. See how the lettering really stands out? Very, very light. Now, once I get the uh, letter area done, we'll go back through and uh, do the rest of the area, as you can see there. Very, very light. Now, if a little bit of paint gets down in the lettering, that's okay. It's not a big deal. See how that really starts to stand out? All right. Really light. Now I'm going to go back through and fill in all the areas around and in between. Now while this uh, base coat is uh, a little wet, I'm going to go ahead and uh, dab in with a sponge very, very lightly a little bit of black accent. Now I always use latex paint. It's very, very easy to clean up. It doesn't make such a mess. I'm just going to kind of highlight the texture in this just a little bit. Hang in there with me. This is going to get a little bit better. I may have mentioned this earlier, but I usually use a thicker font for the lettering so that it stands out a little bit more. Now I'm going to go back in with the base and just kind of blend this black spotting in just a little bit. A little bit more. It's just a little bit of an accent. A little bit more paint. processes that if you think about it too much, you're probably doing it wrong. There's no wrong or right way to do this. This is just how I do it. And you just keep working it in. See, that way it's just not one flat color. Adding in the black gives it a little bit of depth. Blending it in makes it so that it's not such a sharp contrast. Now by looking at the dates here, you can tell that this is also a very old tombstone, so it can't look perfect. It really needs to be dingy. And you just keep working this, adding the black and then the base as much as you like. Okay, and my last step is to take a little bit of spray paint and to angle it down and get a little across the top. It gives it more of a weathered look, just a little bit, not much, because the top is probably going to get weathered before the rest will. And the sides. And there you go. This is how I make tombstones. On to the next thing.